Well, I hope it don't break your heart, Molly, but we're actually going to have to take down this entire back porch. <laughs> take it. We're not going to duplicate it when we build a new one. There's a couple of things that we have to pay attention to. First of all, we have to enclose this whole underside of the railing with balusters. That makes sense. It's a safety issue with children. The other is, when I first look at this landing, it's not deep enough. It's very shallow. It's only 33 inches. It needs to be 42 inches. Watch what happens here. When I want to go in the store, I step up. I then step down to make room for the door to go in. We do this every day. That's a tripping point. All right? So now I'm going to make this 42 inches. We're going to come out deeper. Okay, well then, what happens to the stairs here? Well, if we move this out 9 or 10 inches, we have to move the stairs out 9 or 10 inches. And then, what happens with these blue stones? Nothing. The building inspector is going to allow us to support the bottom of the stairs on this landing. Okay. All right? Okay. So now, if you're ready, I'm going to take the reciprocating saw. I'm going to cut some pieces up. You're going to pile the wood neatly out of our way. Great. You ready? Yes, I am. Now what I want to do is remove this railing, try not to damage the shingle. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start taking off this decking with this bar. Why don't you take the big bar and try to pry off these 2 by 4s on the bottom. Okay, well, these guys are screwed down. Do you think they'll just pop off? No, that bar will take them right off. Just put okay. it right, be you know what to do? Take the bar and use this end like that. Put okay. it right in here Yeah. and pry right up. Okay, let me show you what we have here, Molly. We actually have a ledger that is nailed to the sole of the house, and the joists are actually notched around the ledger supporting them. Next thing I want to do is remove this rim joist so we can work the joist back and forth, breaking them away from the house. I want to try to get this kick off from under the door so we can get in and flash behind it much better than it is. Oh, look at that. <laughs> what the heck is this? This looks like a piece of an aluminum pan or we use that for flashing. <laughs> That's different. Now, the old porch was supported by this concrete block wall. And looking between the blocks and looking down, looks like it goes down four feet, and that's what code requires. All right, I removed the old flashing that was behind the ledger board so I could check the condition of the sheathing, and it's actually in pretty good shape. Now what I want to use today is a soft flashing that will stick to the sheathing, and when we drive a nail or a lag bolt through it, it will actually seal, stopping the water from penetrating. I want you to hold that corner right there. I'm going to stretch it out across the side, pulling off the paper in the back, lining it up here. Tommy, you said this was in good condition, but this looks like insect activity to me. This doesn't well, concern I, you? No, it's not. It's good and solid. Uh-huh. Okay. It's not going to go anywhere. Okay. Okay, I'm going to put one more piece on top of this as a counter flash. All right, Molly, what I want to do is hold this flashing up tight as you can to the underside of that threshold. I don't know. I'll let it flop a little. Just hold it right like that. This is really sticky, so I have to be able to maneuver this up. All right, we get the flashing on, and we're ready to start framing. Let me show you what I've done here. It's actually pre-cut all of the pressure-treated wood for the landing. Let's start back here, give you a little bit anatomy of what we've got. Under the door is a 2x8 pressure treated, that will be a ledger that will bolt or lag to the house. On the outside here, on your side and my side, is called a rim joist, which will carry the 2x6 joist in the center for the decking to rest on. Out here I use the 2x12, and this is called a rim or a header because the stair stringers will mount to these and support those. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to nail these together and I want to use a special galvanized nail that is rated for pressure treated wood. We're going to tack it together and then we're going to use hangers. To attach the rim to the house I'm using these special L brackets and screws designed for this.
Okay, Marley, you want to give me a hand? We're going to pick up the frame, and I'm going to screw it to the building. Now, you notice I attached a couple of pieces of decking to the top side of the frame here that goes against the house. That's a spacer. Okay, now what I'm going to do is try to screw this screw right here into this hole. All right, now let me get a board to temporarily hold up the outside edge. Okay, now we're ready for your side. You get one screw in over there. Okay, now I'll just screw them off. All right, now I want to fasten the ledger to the building using this half-inch lag bolt that's galvanized with a washer. Now when I screw this in with the impact wrench, I'm going to screw it into the sill of the building. Okay, now that holds the ledger, which holds the bracket, which holds the deck to the house. Now I've made the deck level left to right. But I don't want the deck to be level coming away from the house because I want the water to run away from the house. So I check it with my level. Now it's out of level and it is down slightly, but I want to raise it just a little bit. We don't need that much of a pitch. Get my screws started. I raise the deck up just till the bubble touch that one line. Now to hold the joist to the rim, we're using these metal hangers. Now, if you notice on the hangers, there's this little hook right there. When you slide this up against the rim, you hit that hook in, and that holds the hanger into position while you nail it. Want to try it? Yes. Now, I want you to take the hammer, and I want you to put a nail in every one of these holes. Okay? Okay. Start right there. The next thing I want to do is install the 4x4 four four post that will support the railing and the deck. I can't really support the bottom of the 4x4 four four to the hollow block, so what I want to do is slide a 2x8 across the top of the block on both sides. That will allow me to attach the bottom of the 4x4 four four to that, hold it into position. Next thing I want to do is I want to cut a notch in the 4x4 four four to support the deck. So I want to mark the top on the front, on the side, and also the bottom. Next thing I'm gonna do is gonna remove that material and create a groove. I set my saw blade one inch down, and now I'm simply gonna make a series of cuts. Now we just knock it out with a hammer and clean it up with a chisel. Beautiful. Okay, I just finished attaching the two 4x4 four four posts to the 2x8 sleeper below using these metal brackets and screws. I also took some 3-inch ceramic screws and screwed through the post into the sleeper below. I took some more 3-inch screws and screwed those through the face of the frame and to the side of the frame into the 4x4, four four, making it really strong. Next thing we have to do is calculate the stair stringer. The first thing I need to know is what decking material we're going to use. In this case, we're going to use a composite material made of recycled material. We're going to use two of these for each tread. Now, what I've done is I've made a little stringer right here so you can understand what we're going to do. We have two pieces of material for each tread. The first thing I want to do is measure the two pieces together. That's 11 inches. I also want to have a half an inch overhang right here. So 11 inches minus a half is 10 and a half. Remember that number. 10 and a half. Okay. Now I have to calculate the height of the riser but I want to calculate the height of the riser from the face of the stair tread at the base. First thing I want to do is I want to take a piece of finished decking, lay it on the center of the deck, take my level, I'm going to measure out 31 and a half inches because that's the dimension of the three tread depths. 
all right? So I set my level at 31 and a half inches. I then take my tape measure and I drop it down, making the level level comes out to 28 and a half inches, okay? Now, the old stairway had four risers. We want to put four risers in here again. We take four, we divide it into 28 and a half. That's seven and an eighth. That's the equal height of each riser. Next thing I do is I take my framing square and I set my framing square on seven and an eighth. That's the height of my riser. And what's the width of the stair tread? Ten and a half. Ten and a half for the stair tread. I attach it to a board for a straight edge or a guide. I lay it on a two by 12, which is gonna be my stringer. And I simply mark away. I do the majority of the cut of the stringer with my circular saw, but I don't want to overcut where the tread meets the riser, so I stop, because that'll weaken it. But I want to finish up the underside using my hand saw. All right. With a stringer marked and cut, I'm gonna use this as a template so that the rest of my stringers will match exactly. There are two adjustments that I still have to make to the stringer. And let me show you what I have here. When I hold this stringer next to the install stringer, you see what's going on here? They're wider and higher. Now, the reason for that is, at the top here, this is actually your finished riser. When I install a riser here on every step, the stairs come forward. So what I need to do is take whatever thickness I'm using for my riser off of the back so this will slide it back. The next adjustment that I have to make, because it's higher, whatever stair tread material I'm using in thickness, I have to take this thickness off of the bottom, allowing this to go down, and they'll all line up. All right, our stringers are installed. Now your old landing had three stringers. I installed four. I don't like the spacing between the stringers to be more than 16 inches apart, so it gives a nice solid base now. Now in the corner, we installed a diagonal block. It actually does two things. It adds rigidity to the deck, but it also gives good structure so that when we nail the deck to it. Now we're ready to install the riser. Our bottom set of newel posts are installed. Now we're ready for the decking. The first piece of decking fits fine, but the second piece of decking has to be cut to fit around both newel posts. So I transferred those measurements to this piece right here, and now I've got a cut out for the first post. All right, Molly, your first step is in and two more to go. That looks great, Tom. We're using a special screw designed for this composite material. When you drive it in, it leaves a nice, smooth finish. Now we're ready to install the decking on our landing. Now I framed the joist parallel to the house. Now what that does is it allows me to do a couple of things. First of all, I can put the decking perpendicular to the house. The reason for that is if the rain should hit the decking, it will run down because we frame the decking slightly out of level. In other words, it's pitched down a little bit. Also, at the top of the stairs, I will never have to worry about this board loosening over time. Now to space the deck boards evenly, I'm using a penny finish nail between each one. All right, we've ripped down a piece of the decking material that we're gonna use for the kick under the door. We'll screw that off in a minute. But what do you think of the deck? I think it's wonderful. I can't wait to walk on it. We can't walk on it yet. It's not safe. We still have to do the railing. Okay. Now, the railing system is simply a 2x4 pressure treated that's going to go on the bottom and a 2x4 pressure treated that'll go on the top. And in between them will be 2x2 pressure treated, spaced accordingly. 
Now, what we first have to do is find the angle and the length for the top and bottom railing. Now, to do that, we're simply going to place this 2x4 on the nose of the stairs. Now, you hold that in, mm -hmm. and I'm going to mark on the inside of this 4x4 and the inside of that 4x4. That gives us the angle and the length for the top and bottom rail. It also gives us the angle for the bottom and the top of our balusters. Now we're ready to cut. And now the balusters. I can do one end all at once. Now we gotta cut them to length. All right, here are the pieces to the railing that go on the stair. First, I have a two by four that I've cut to length and angle for the bottom and one for the top. Next, I've cut all the ballasters to the length and the angle. Now, rather than attach the ballasters directly to the two by four, I've ripped down a strip of wood called a nailer with the same angle and the same length of the two by four. I will then screw through this, attaching the ballasters to this, making this system easier to attach to the top and bottom rail. Okay, there's one. Now all you have to do is screw it in place. All right, Molly, you have got a new deck. Try it out. Wow, this is terrific. I am really happy with this. I can't wait till my husband comes home and I get to tell him what I built today. Well, can you tell him I helped? <laughs>